Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm so excited to have you here today. In this video, I'll be comparing the shuttle aesthetic model with the flux model. So, what exactly is the shuttle model? Let me break it down for you. The shuttle model is designed to generate images in just four to six steps. And the best part, it claims to produce images that look just as good as the ones from flux dev, but with fewer steps. Sounds amazing, right? First things first, you can download the shuttle model from the link I'll share below. Once downloaded, save it in your diffusion model folder. Now, if you have a system with low VRAM, like 1 or 2 GB, don't worry. You can grab the FP8 version of the model that's optimized for systems with limited memory. Just download it and save it in the same diffusion model folder. Next, Let's talk about the Comfy UI setup. Head to the workflow section where you'll find a ready to use workflow with all the resources you need. Uh, trust me, it's super simple to get started. Open Comfy UI, load the workflow, and you'll see I've organized everything to three groups. In the first group, you'll find the shuttle model, which is used to generate the images. The second group has the flux model, which also creates images. And the third group is for upscaling. Upscaling, no, makes your images even sharper and more detailed. Now, uh, let me tell you about the upscaling method we use here. It's called the tile method. This method upscales your images piece by piece, uh, ensuring top-notch quality every time. You can decide how to process your images based on your workflow. For instance, if you select model input 1 and image input 1, the shuttle model will both generate the image and upscale it, handling everything from start to finish. Alternatively, if you use image input 1 and model input 2, the shuttle model will generate the initial image, but the flux model will handle the upscaling. This way, you can combine the strengths of both models for even more flexibility in your workflow. For shuttle, I use just four steps to generate the image, while for flux, I use 20 steps. Before generating, I disabled the upscaling feature to compare the raw outputs of both models. This gives a fair idea of how each one performs on its own. Here's the prompt I use it a flowing hair rising from the depths of the Pacific Ocean. The setting sun casts a warm glow on her skin as she emerges from the water. The scene feels peaceful and serene. With hyper-realistic cinematic lighting, shallow depth of field and AK resolution, ought I use this same prompt for both the shuttle and flux models. When it was time to generate the images, The shuttle model absolutely amazed me. It was lightning fast, like seriously fast. You blink eh, and the image is ready. Here's the result if you zoom in looking at the image generated by shuttle. The model captures a vibrant and lifelike front facing view of the character. The lighting is soft yet dramatic with the golden hour glow perfectly illuminating the subject's face and hair. The water ripples are well detailed, adding a realistic touch, especially around the edges of the subject, making it feel personal and engaging. The image feels polished and complete even in just four steps, where flux, while it takes 20 steps, it provides a different artistic style. The emphasis on mood and background gives it a painterly, cinematic vibe, but at the expense of the subject's facial details. So, which one's better? Honestly, it depends on what you... Okay, so first, I wanted to see how the image generated by shutter looks after upscaling. To do this, I set image input 1 and used model input 1 for upscaling. For this example, shuttle handled both generating and upscaling the image. Here's the result the woman in the image doesn't look fully realistic, but considering it was done in just 4 steps. The result is really impressive. 
Next, I tried another example to see how well the model creates a realistic image of a woman. I used this prompt, Instagram photo, front shot, portrait, photo, 24, year old woman wearing a dress, beautiful face, cinematic shot, realistic image. Shutter generated the image super fast, in about four and a half seconds. The skin looked a bit plastic, like but still. For just four steps, the result was surprisingly good. If you zoom in, you can see the AI details clearly. Then, I enabled image input 1 and model input 2 to upscale the same image using flux instead of shuttle. After upscaling, the result looked a little different but not as realistic as I wanted. However, for a quick process, it still turned out pretty great. Next. I tested another photorealistic prompt, photorealistic portrait of a young woman with lighting effects. I ran the same prompt through both Shuttle and Flux models to compare the results. Shuttle nailed the lighting as described in the prompt, like sunlight coming through a window. Flux, however, didn't fully capture the lighting in the same way. If you look closely, you'll notice that Shuttle did a better job in certain areas, like how the hair and lighting looked natural. In the end, both models have their strengths. Shuttle is fantastic if you want quick results in just four steps. It adds details like lighting and textures quite well. Flux, on the other hand, gives a more cinematic feel but takes longer to process. So, it's up to you. Do you prefer speed or extra flair? I think both are fun to experiment. I wanted to test if Shuttle and Flux could create a nice environment image, so I gave them both the same prompt. The prompt was, A peaceful Nordic winter countryside bathed in the warm glow of golden hour. Soft lighting makes the landscape feel like a tranquil haven. There's a small shop with a glowing sign, a snowy mountain in the background, and clouds lit by the setting sun. Cars are parked in front of the shop and the wet road reflects the light, creating a calm and cozy village scene. At first, I ran the prompt in shuttle. The image was generated super fast in just four steps. It showed everything as described. The shop, the glowing sign, the snowy mountain and the warm sunlight. The lighting look looked amazing especially how it hit the mountain. Even the reflections on the wet road were captured perfectly. Honestly, it looked very realistic and I was really happy with the result. Next, I tried the same prompt in Flux to compare. Flux also did a great job, but I noticed something right away. The light from the sun wasn't as vibrant as it was in Shuttle's version. In Shuttle's image, you could clearly see sunlight on the mountain, but Flux missed that detail. While both models created good images, I feel Shuttle captured the scene better based on the prompt. After that, I upscaled Shuttle's image to see how much better it could look. Wow, the details became even sharper and the image looked incredible. The lighting, reflections and atmosphere were all enhanced after upscaling making the scene even more beautiful. Now I wanted to try something different, so I tested a fantasy environment. The prompt was, a mystical land at night with a castle fog, a full moon, flying dragons and magical details. The scene is like a dream with a watercolor style and double exposure. Our shuttle generated the image quickly again. It created a castle with fog, a glowing full moon, and a dreamy atmosphere. However, the dragon didn't look very realistic. It felt more like a placeholder than a detailed creature. Then I tried the same prompt in Flux. Flux took a bit longer, but the result was different. It focused more on creating a vibrant fantasy world with lots of magical details. The dragon was farther away, so it wasn't super detailed either, but the overall scene looked great with the castle fog and moon blending beautifully. In the end, both models did well in their own ways. A shuttle is faster. Now tested how well shuttle and flux models work in creating a cozy, detailed scene. Let me share what I found. 
the prompt I asked both models to create this. A dark, cozy library room with a lit fireplace. The floor is wooden and paintings hang on the wall. In one corner, a woman in a black dress is sitting on a dark red sofa, reading a book. There's a rug and a coffee table in the room. First, I ran the prompt in shutter. The result was very good. Here's what I saw. The fireplace looked warm and cozy. The woman was sitting on the sofa. And her dress looked elegant. There was a painting of fireworks on the wall, which matched the vibe of the room. However, there were a couple of small issues. The coffee table didn't have a coffee cup on it, as I described in the prompt. The woman's face wasn't very clear. It lacked detail. Still, overall, shuttle gave me a good result. The room looked realistic and cozy. Next, eh, I tried the same prompt with Flux. Flux gave a different result. The image looked more like a painting instead of being realistic. Uh, the details in the room were nice, but it didn't feel as cozy as a Shuttle's version. So, based on this test, Shuttle did a better job cap the scene realistically. Now, I wanted to fix the small problems in Shuttle's image, like the woman's face. Here's what I did. I used Flux's model to upscale the shuttle image. I set the denoise strength to 0.5 and took 10 steps. After upscaling, the woman's face looked much better. The image became sharper and clearer. There was still an issue with the woman's hands. They looked a bit weird. So, I reduced the denoise strength to 0.3 and tried again. This fixed the problem. The hands looked much better, and the face was still clear. Enhancing the images to enhance the image even more, I divided the width into three parts and the height into four parts, a three by four. This helped add more details. The final image looked amazing, clear, cozy, and realistic. I also tried dividing it into four by five, but that didn't work well. It did made the image worse, so I recommend sticking to 3x4 for the best results. Between Shuttle and Flux, here's what I learned. Shuttle is great for realistic and cozy scenes. To fix any small issues like faces or hands, you can use upscaling with a low denoise strength and divide the image into 3x4 for enhancement. That's it for today's test. I hope this helps you understand how to create and improve images with these models. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe for more fun and helpful content. See you next time!